Okay, so why the scale is not your friend, and I'm gonna ask Eliza to help me with this as well, but I wanna talk a little bit about report cards. So report cards might tell us that we are an A student, we're a B student, we're a C student, we could have tried harder, but really a report card is not a good measurement of intellect. And the reason I bring that up is I think we have this fixed idea that the scale is the absolute number one way that we can best identify how successful we've been. And the problem with that is that it really isn't a great measurement because it doesn't take into account things like how much water we've had to drink, how much sodium, when was the last time that we had a bowel movement, how much have we been exercising, um, are we taking medications? There are a number of things that can affect that number on the scale. And yet it's still the number one thing that I find when I'm working with clients that they're saying, you know, I feel the need to step on it every single day. So I wanted to bring up the report card thing because I think you guys can all remember back to a time that you were in school where you might have tried your hardest and the report card did not reflect the effort which you put in. And maybe similarly there were um, classes where you didn't try very hard and pulling out an A was was nothing. I think I can relate this as well to losing weight for example when you're breastfeeding versus trying to lose weight when you're going through menopause. There are different times in our lives that are gonna challenge what we're seeing. And so that's one of the things that I wanted to recognize. Plus the scale is just our, it's really our gravitational relationship to the earth. It doesn't say anything about our efforts. It doesn't say anything about how hard we've been trying, what we're stocking our fridge with. Um, and I wanted to call on Eliza to share a little bit about this experience because she's someone I often hear from in terms of this isn't going well or this is going really well. And I'm wondering if you can share a little bit and that's why I posted her picture as well because um, she's one of those people that sometimes is relying too much on the scale as we all are at times and, um, and it trips her up. So why don't yeah. you take the floor? Okay, so um, definitely, let's see. Um, I What I think I can remember at this time is that um, that picture was from four months ago. And I am one of those people, I step on the scale once, maybe twice a week. And I know that it doesn't reflect my efforts, um, but I have just been like, I'm not seeing a difference, I'm not seeing a difference. And I probably, so now I've actually totaled it out, but um, it's, it's a total of, sorry, let me look for a sec. I wrote it down. It's a total of, um, I lost eight pounds in the last four months. So um, what they say with weight loss, at least, is, is one to two pounds a week. So if I was doing one to two pounds a week, I should be down, you know, um, 16 to 32 pounds. But really, that's not the case. And I'm working out five days a week. Um, and on top of that, I am very careful with my nutrition. Again, like, I'll sneak those brownies here and there. <laughs> as Sandy's, Sandy pointed out, <laughs> um, but no. And um, so I'm constantly telling my sister, I'm like, I, I'm not seeing a difference. I'm not noticing a difference. And I um, went to my doctor and I'm like, maybe my, maybe my hormones are off or maybe my, um, like, maybe I just, I just don't know what to do. And he's like, well, you should cut back to 1300 calories. I was like, um, for the amount that I'm active, that's not going to work. So I've been trying different things here and there. I finally found something that's consistent. Um, Carolyn, like you were talking about your consistency, found something that's consistent that is um, a good amount for me, a good amount of protein, a good amount of um, carbs, good amount of fat. Um, and um, so what I wanted to say was those pictures, I am so glad I put together. Um, I put them side by side because like I said, it was eight pounds and I, I don't really... I didn't, I don't think I even knew it was that much. Like I told my sister it was only four pounds, but actually when I look back at the measurements that I've been keeping up with consistently on a monthly basis, um, it's eight pounds. And on top of that, I've dropped 10 inches, but like in my head, 10 inches is a lot, but it doesn't sound like that much. And, um, like as much as I would like for it to be. Um, but when I look at those pictures, I can definitely see it, um, like a big, 
big difference. And so having that side by side, knowing that the scale is not showing me, um, is not showing me all the effort that I put in and then being able to see that progress from those pictures. That's, that's something huge. So if I was only relying on the scale, I wouldn't be too happy right now because I'm not down that 16 to 32 pounds, like, like where, you know, I would expect to be. So, but I know that my body is getting good nutrition and I'm just, hi, Hannah, there's your picture. <laughs> um, but I'm just, just really, really excited about it. Great, thank you so much. And one of the things that you talked about is actually one of the things that we're gonna cover um, tonight, which is different ways that we can actually um, look and keep ourselves accountable rather than just relying on the scale, which is not our friend. So one of the things that I was thinking about as a solution to this, because I used to be one of those chronic scale users, I would um, you know, weigh myself before and after going to the bathroom, weigh myself when I wake up in the morning, when I go to bed at night. Um, and so one of the things that I think could be useful is if you are very tempted to do it, you can switch your scale to metrics. Then it's one extra step because oftentimes it's so much a habit um, that we just step on. But if it's one extra step and I have to be conscientious, to every single time then take out my calculator and figure out where I am, I'm probably less likely to do it. It's more of a time suck. Um, another thing is taking into consideration um, what it is that you're using to measure the success. So there are a lot of great apps out there. A lot of us have MyFitnessPal. We do that because if we have um, sedentary jobs, it's better to get us up and get us moving around. And I use MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal, however, um, I started my fitness pal years ago at the time when I started my weight was 126. So what's interesting is yes, I lost. Yes, I lost a significant amount because I ended up doing, um, I started it as I was starting to do fitness competitions. Well, my weight at a fitness competition is not my weight on a normal day. Um, I'm water depleted when that happens there are a number of things that are going on. But when I look at that arbitrary number, what's out there is, well, at one time you were successful on this because you weighed, you know, 12 or 14 pounds less than you do now. So when I look at that over time, it looks as like, it looks as though I was not as successful as I am now, which isn't, um, isn't a correct measurement. Now, I weigh a little more than that because I did just have a baby. So when I look at an app like that, it doesn't show me you are actually down, you know, 17 pounds since you had your baby. It shows you're up this many pounds since you started using this app. And so a lot of times we get discouraged because we put ourselves out there publicly and we're showing this is my success, but it doesn't take into consideration the many variables. So think about things like that too. Am I measuring my success, hi Carolyn, am I measuring my success um, on something that doesn't take the whole picture into account? Because this really is a lifestyle that we're working towards. It's not, we're gonna do a diet, this is gonna be a quick fix that's gonna get us through to the end of the year. It's what habits can I put in place now that I'll continue to use? And recognizing that with that, there will be variability. Um, one thing that I love to recommend, and I know I've recommended this to Hannah um, and as well to my sister, is take a picture in your skinny jeans or your dress that you love. You bought them at one point because they did fit. Um, and taking that picture is a great accountability tool. So just as my sister was saying in her example, she had no idea until she put those pictures side by side exactly how successful she has been. Uh, it's very mundane in the day-to-day -to, -day to recognize, you know, we're taking it meal by meal. Did I eat a whole pint of Halo Top tonight or did I have the correct serving size? Okay, well, do I remember that three days later when I'm um, getting down on myself about another choice that I made? So really looking at taking a picture of something that you want to look your best in that one time made you feel really good and working towards um, feeling good in it again. So 
similar to the scale example, if I took a picture in my skinny jeans, I'm not going to continue to take that picture every day. Maybe I'll take the picture now, follow some healthy choices, and then um, in another two weeks, take that picture again and see if I've been successful. And I think along with that, taking pictures in the same outfit in your before and afters can also help you to see things that you may not otherwise recognize. Um, I see Hannah nodding with that and Carolyn's nodding with that. Do you ladies have something that you can relate to as far as that goes? Carolyn, you look like you're muted. <laughs> there you go. Is so new to this whole thing. I'm I'm used to I go to meetings or something. Um, no, I I definitely I don't know if I'd want to take a picture in my skinny jeans because I can't quite get them on. But <laughs> I I definitely have taken those before pictures. And uh, it's okay. My cat just walked in. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's definitely an, an eye-popping <clears throat> experience for those before and after pictures. And I think it's quite relatable too that a lot of us have sometimes taken those before pictures and then we just never take the after pictures, either because we feel like we failed ourselves along the way or we're afraid to see what's there. But the goal is... Uh, oh doing it so that um, we can recognize over time how the smarter choices are getting us to where we want to go. Um, and then, Hannah, did you want to say something as well? Are you muted? I have two things going on, sorry. <laughs> I have my phone and then I have my iPad. <laughs> so um, yes, I did the skinny jeans and um, I was actually amazed by just my 30 day transformation. Um, you know, and I, I wasn't super strict either. You know, I, like Eliza, stuck, stuck a little treat here and there, um, you know, every day. I mean, I didn't make it a, a habitual or anything, but um, I treated myself. I didn't starve myself. You know, I made sure that I, um, gave my body the nutrition that it needed. So, but just in 30 days time, it was amazing to see that transformation and, and it actually made me want to continue and to push for, Oh my God, what am I going to look like at 60 days? Oh my God, what am I going to look at 90? You know, so it's, it's actually really beneficial to take those before and afters. And Sarah, I just wanted to chime in. Um, so with the measurements, um, I, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm clear on, like, with the measurements, I'm not just measuring my stomach or I'm not just measuring my butt. Like, there are, um, and, and Sarah, I think you use the same one, but there's um, a bunch of different points that you can measure, including your arms, including your calves, including your thighs, all of those things. So maybe I'm not seeing results in just my stomach. Maybe that was the, the biggest thing with this picture. So again, when I, when I went back and I looked at those measurements, I said, wow, okay, so not much has changed in my stomach or not much has changed in my butt, but I've got differences in my thighs and now I see from the pictures. So um, I'm happy, Sandy and Hannah and Carolyn, I'm happy to send out the measurements that I use. That way you're not just looking at this one part and saying, oh, well, my stomach is not going down, so I'm not being successful because there are other parts of your body um, which are um, very beneficial to see those results as, as well. If you could post that, Eliza, actually, when I, in the, um, oh my gosh, sorry. If you could post that in the um, recording of this video. Oh. When I post it in the group, that would be awesome. Like in the comments. Oh, in the comments. Okay, gotcha. Cool. Um, and then one of the things that I wanted to talk about too is pay, paying attention to your hunger cues. And are you hydrated? So I think one of the things that happens often is 
we're snacking because it's there, but we're not really listening to what is it that our body needs at this time. A recommendable amount of water to drink per day is half of our body weight in ounces. So if I'm a person who weighs 160 pounds, then I wanna drink 80 ounces of water. Um, and that's especially important in the winter because that's something that we don't often notice in the same way that we do in the summer. Um, and something I think is really um, noteworthy is setting goals other than just weight goals. So if, if our goal is to, you know, step away from the scale and stop being so addicted to it, then by setting weight goals, we're not really taking the steps that are necessary to keep us from um, indulging in that everyday weigh-in or that every few hour weigh-in. So looking at things like your strength, so pounds lifted, um, how many reps you accomplished, how far you ran. If you're somebody who wears a Fitbit, how many days a week are you getting in your 10,000 steps? Is there a challenge that can be set amongst your group of friends to help keep you accountable? And that's one of the things that this group is, is it's a group of accountability. So if someone came to this group and they said, you know, my goal for myself starting small is that I just want to go to an office party and only take one plate of food and that is all that I want to take. You know, starting small so that it feels achievable, it doesn't feel like we're missing out um, and we're still able to celebrate. So that's one of the other things that can be looked at. Um, along with this, one of the things that I wanted to throw in there last minute, and this is something I know that Eliza and Sandy aren't able to use, but Hannah and I have um, really benefited from Ionic Supreme, which is a supplement that Isogenics offers that deals with stress management. So physical and emotional stresses. Although I know that my sister had been recommended when she saw her naturopath to introduce um, adaptogens. Adaptogens are found in plants. They help the plants to grow in stressful environments. And so similarly, when people take them, they help us to deal with physical and emotional stress this time of year tends to be very stressful and um, everything's getting wrapped up with a neat little bow uh, right as we're about to set into the new year. So having things that will help you with stress management will also help to curb the cravings and find success in that way. Um, this is telling me that we have about seven minutes left. I just want to go around and see how everybody is with this information. If there's anything additional that I left out that you could contribute to the group, I would love to hear it. So would Phoenix, he's jumping all over the place in anticipation. Um, I guess I'll start. Um, and I was just thinking things, little things like, oh, <laughs> um, that's okay. Oh, dear friend. <laughs> um, they want in on the conversation. Um, no, I was thinking things like sleep as well. So my sister had mentioned water. So um, keeping up with your water intake, but I was also thinking sleep. If you're not getting enough sleep, then your body is, um, is, you know, not, is not going to be dropping any pounds or, or doing much changing. Um, so make sure, so maybe not even make sure, maybe just um, your goal, sorry, maybe your goal is to get to bed at a certain time that you set, or maybe your goal is to go to bed one hour earlier or Hi. something like that. So you're getting that recommended, um, seven to nine hours, um, which it varies for everybody. Um, and then like my sister said with the water and make sure that you are doing half your, um, body weight in ounces. Um, what else was I thinking? There was one other that I was thinking. Oh, um, this is, I think this is a big one, but um, just a thought is that we are so focused on cutting our calories. Um, we're just really focused on, we need to cut, we need to cut, we need to cut. And I think I kind of mentioned that my naturopath had told me to eat 1300 calories, which I didn't follow because I'm not giving mm. my um, body the proper nutrition. But also if I'm not eating enough calories, then I'm not going to, my body's going to hold on to everything. And I'm sure you guys have heard that. So um, my sister can probably speak to this a little bit better, but um, I remember originally when I started, we had talked about doing, um, what did I say? Oh, um, 
so if my weight, let's say, is 140, I just add a zero to that. So 1,400 calories a day, approximately. Obviously, if your goals are um, athletic performance, um, that's, that's going to be different. And it's going to be different for everybody. But just, just a thought, because I know that that was probably something that I was guilty of, was cutting way too many calories. Thank you. That's helpful information. Yeah. <laughs> and actually what you said, Eliza, I think is good for somebody who's really active, but the, the number is three, three fourths of your body weight um, and add a zero to the end. So if I'm a person who weighs 250, 200 pounds, then 150 is three fourths of that. So 1500 has that zero at the end. That would be a minimum for me. Um, and then, of course, it would be more if I'm an active person. But I would say no less than 1,200. So if you are a person who weighs, you know, less than um, whatever three-fourths would be, would get you less than 1,200, I would say that would be a minimum because that your body, if you've looked at what you burn per day, you need to be sustaining your activity. I know you're upset because you want to eat. <laughs> he wants calories. He wants calories. Well, that and he needs a diaper change, but um, anyone else, and thank you guys so much for being here. I so appreciate it. I know it's, it's busy during the week. Uh, we're all in different time zones. We're all on different bedtimes. <laughs> well, thank you for doing this, Sarah. It's, uh, it sounds like it's going to be very helpful. I'm looking forward to the measurement information from Eliza, too. And it. Yeah, and feel free to call her Eliza. I know she goes by two different <laughs> like, pronunciations. Her okay. Hebrew pronunciation and then her English pronunciation. Uh, well, I figured you've known her longer than anybody. So. <laughs> She's pr pronunciation proficient. <laughs> All right. On that note, um, anyone else? Otherwise, I'm going to close this out before we lose it, both on here and with time. I don't have anything. Well, thanks for being here, Hannah. Good to see you. Guys. Thanks for having me. And feel free to wow, wow. And feel free to welcome any of your friends that you know will be good count uh, partners in accountability, either because they're in close proximity with you, or because mm -hmm. you know that they have similar goals. I would love to see them on this call as well. Add them to Project Potential and um, look forward to it. We will be back same time next week with a different topic. Thank Sounds you. Good. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye. 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 Where's my mouse?